Hello everyone, Carmine from New York here with class number 247. I've been a photographer here in New York City for the last 50 years and this is my channel giving back to the community, the photographic community, giving you guys my 50 years of tips and tricks to improve your photography on a low budget. There is no reason at all why photography over the years got so expensive. Well, not on this channel. We do not make you think for a second you need a $4,000 camera. No, not here, folks. All right, please subscribe, comment below, give me a thumbs up, and email me any question about photography, black and white photo at AOL.com, and I'll get back to you with my professional answer. Okay, here's what we got going on today. I'm going to lower the camera a bit. Guys, today it's all about the Nikon 1 V1 camera. Nikon Bellows. Nikon 50mm 1.4 autofocus lens. All right, but you don't use autofocus in this situation. We're doing macro photography of butterflies, some beetles, and a tarantula hawk. That's a type of a wasp or bee. It's a flying insect. Uh, it's just an incredible little critter. Okay, so here's my setup. Now, during this video, you're going to see the photographs taken with this very setup. All right, so I don't forget. I always get questions over the years when I set up this setup with the bellows and taking beautiful photographs of this butterfly right here. What did you use for a background? Well, let me show you. I take a photograph in my vast tens of thousands of photographs of something natural. A butterfly would be around flowers. So I bring up this photograph on my screen, okay? This is a photograph of a flower where a butterfly might be, okay? And it's so far away, it's about 12 inches behind the butterfly, the subject for this shoot, that it's gonna be all blurry anyway. But what's important is that it's the outdoor colors, okay? The greens and the yellows, whatever. So that's what I recommend you guys do. You can do it on your iPad, you can do it on your laptop, you can do it anywhere. Or you can print the photograph and put that in the background. If you don't want to use a photograph for your background, sometimes I use these. These are, this is a whole set of colored felt, okay, that you could just either use it as a whole sheet or cut up pitch cut up pieces of the felt and put them and put them randomly on one piece and put it in the background it'll be out of focus but it'll give you great colors a great bokeh okay all right now 
as I go through all the parts that you see here, I'll put up the uh, a screen of where you can buy it. Now, not this is not a sponsored video, which means if you buy the stuff that I'm showing you, I get no money. I paid for everything you see here. I just put up those slides of where you can buy them to help you. You saw the background, right? We'll start that way. That's the background. Next, this is the insect that we'll be photographing today. Sometimes a vegetable, right? In this series, you're gonna see the inside of a pepper, right? A red bell pepper, the seeds that are inside. All taken with the setup. Okay, so the bug. Where do I get the bugs or the insects? I go to Etsy.com, E-T-S-Y.com, and I just search for, believe it or not, taxidermy insects. Okay, that's how they're listed. Taxidermy. Next, okay, I just happened to have the uh, insect. Uh, it was uh, crazy glued onto a pin. And then the pin is attached to these little uh, blocks with an alligator clip. It's a perfect to fit on here. All right, now. This is a elevator type crankable adjustable lift. It's in the scientific category uh, on Amazon, right? And it's adjustable. There's a little crank here. It goes up and down, which is perfect when you're trying to line everything up in your screen, okay? And I have that lift uh, sitting on a two by four to bring everything up to the, uh, to the lens, right? And everything's adjustable, okay? Next. Moving closer to me, we have the lens. This is the Nikkor 50 millimeter. Yes, it's just a 50 millimeter lens. This is not a macro lens. There is no macro filter on the front. It's not a macro lens. It's just a nifty 50. In this case, it's the F 1.4 lens. Now, the lens is an F mount, and this is a Nikkor Number three, they made many, many types, but number three bellows. All right, I found was the most inexpensive. It was under $30, okay? Now the bellows is attached to this adapter ring. This is the Nikon 1V1. The lens mount on a Nikon 1V1 is a Nikon 1 mount, okay? so. This is an adapter, you see it here. We have the bellows, which is F mount, attaches to the adapter, which goes from F mount to Nikon one mount. Simple. Now, this is the Nikon 1V1. I have a whole video about this camera separately. Uh, the reason I picked this is it's nice and small. I didn't have to use my big Nikon D3, which is very heavy, right? Puts a lot of stress on these rails. Okay. The camera is mounted to this rail system. Okay, this, is, this one happens to be by Newer. All right, there's many, many brands out there at many different prices. I, uh, over the years, you know, they get bent and rusty and loose and you can't find them these rails so i bought and returned several newer brand ones different models to come up with this one okay this one works the best it's all metal and the gears work perfectly <clears throat> so the way you focus this system you keep it on uh infinity 
believe it or not. Then I use either F11 or F8. Now, the, oh, and the camera has to be on manual, not aperture priority, shutter priority, it has to be on manual because you're controlling everything. You're controlling the aperture by the ring, by the f-stop ring. The lens you pick must have an aperture ring, okay? Must have an aperture ring that you can turn. Otherwise, you'll be shooting wide open, okay? With this, with this bellow system that I'm showing you here. Uh, my settings for all the photographs you're gonna see throughout this video were All ISO 100. It was either F8 here, right, on the aperture ring, and one half a second on the shutter, right? You can control your shutter speed, or it was F11 at one second. That was it. And I just vary back and forth with that. And the way you focus is there's a wheel on the side, right? Which bring, now watch the camera. You see how the camera's getting closer to me? And then it goes closer to the subject, right? That's how you focus. You focus using the rails. This rail system also happens to have a left and right control. You can swing the whole camera back and forth that way, right? So you get your rough adjustment by physically, right? Physically moving the insect back and forth till you get it real close. Okay. Then you find focus and take your picture. What's great about using a digital camera over a film camera is that you can see your exposure right after you take the shot, right? You can see everything. If it's in focus, you can see everything. Okay. Also, I don't use the remote. This, this has a remote an infrared remote. I don't use that. I just use the self timer. And I use the self timer on either five seconds or 10 seconds, right? I just set it for 10 seconds, press the shutter, sit back, don't touch anything. Boom, it takes the picture. The rails are attached to another, let me lift this up carefully, attached to another scientific lift. Okay, it's like a scissor lift. Okay, and the way I attach that is, there's a tripod mount that goes from the rails, tripod mount, and into this two by four piece of wood. This looks pretty crude, but this two by four is epoxied to the surface of this lift. And there's a good reason why it's oversized. It goes from here to here. That's because of trial and error over my 30 years that these lifts, right? They were not designed for photography. They were just designed to lift a beaker up and down uh, under a mixer right? That's all they were designed for. To give this stability, right? Because this lift, right? It has these four legs that go up and down. They're arms, right? It's a scissor, right? The two by four gives it mass and weight and it goes across the whole length of the top of the lift. Okay? Then I have the lift. Now, Lighting, I use, I'll show you this one because it's off. I use these, well, I use these lights. I'll show you all slides in here. These are just LED desk lamps. And I just adjust the lights. 
and I don't really have to adjust them much. I just put them on either side of the lens, right? Uh, Crisscrossing at the subject, and you can bring them in and out a little bit. But once you have it set, right? Once you have your lighting set, it's just set it and forget it, okay? Um, what I like to do is sometimes I just have the light coming in from one side, so I'll shut one light. Or put one on and shut the other light. This way on your subject, you'll have shadows on one side, light on the other side, like a portrait. You're taking a portrait of this butterfly or moth, whatever it is. Okay, so that's the lighting, very inexpensive. Now, why steady light instead of flash? Because you, as you're looking through your either your viewfinder or your screen, you can see where the shadows are going to be. You can see your highlights. If you're blowing out the highlights on one side, you can bring the light further away, decreasing the brightness, right? You can see uh, if you need to uh, take this. Now, it, these lights come with these little metal discs, right? You can see if you want to mount your light higher, right, on this side of the 2x4 and come down from the top. Okay, light your subject from down, coming down this way. Very versatile, very inexpensive lighting. Okay? you can, And that's why I don't use flash I don't use flash for macro photography before I forget this system right you might be saying well why don't you just put it on a tripod because look at how I have it set up it's on a desk I'm my legs are under the desk I have full control if I use the tripod I'd have to be way back and looking over and then you can hardly reach your subject this works out much better. Speaking of tripods, bellows is such a high magnification. Please don't even think about doing this outside with live critters on a leaf. You will be so disappointed, you'll just sell everything. Because the lightest breeze, and there's always a wind, there's always wind when you have a bug on a leaf outside there's always some kind of leaf and the bug is always moving you will hate the outcome if you use this system outside if you want to take macro pictures outside using the sun of living bugs just get a macro lens and you'll be fine this system with bellows is the magnification is so intense As you're seeing now in these photographs that any little um, bump you just blow it out you, you, you'll just be heartbroken okay and even at f11 look at the photographs the depth of field is razor thin all right guys this has been Carmine from New York this has been class 247 subscribe thumbs up and be well.